In this example, we'll look at how to use the squeeze theorem to show that the limit is x over zero of x squared times cosine of one over x equals zero. So the first thing to think about is why would I want or need to use squeeze theorem on this problem? Well, the main reason why is my limit has two parts. I have one part here that goes to zero. This x squared will go to zero as x goes to zero. And I have a second part here where the limit does not exist. However, it's not a terrible limit that does not exist because it's at least bounded and I can use that fact to help me use the squeeze theorem to solve this problem. So what do I need to do to actually use the squeeze theorem? Well, I have my function f, that's the value I'm given here. And I have my value c, that's just zero. In order to apply the squeeze theorem, I need this function u and l. This upper and lower bound that are gonna pinch in on my function and they have to prove they actually do these squeezing conditions. They have to show that u of x is bigger than f is bigger than l, and that u and l have the same limit, namely that of zero, because I'm told in the problem team that it should go to zero, at zero. How do we do that? Well, let's look at our function to start with. Let's start with our cosine term that's hiding in there. So I have this cosine of one over x term. What do I know? Well, I know this is always between minus one and one for any value of x. In particular, this tells that the absolute value of cosine of one over x is less than one. By multiplying both sides of this inequality by x squared, I get that the absolute value of x squared cosine of one over x is less than x squared, because I can put the x squared inside the absolute value, and now I can unpack the absolute value again to get that minus x squared is less equal x squared cosine of one over x is less than x squared. This here is a good sign for solving this problem. Why is that? Well, this here is my f. So what this indicates here is I should try to consider this as my function l of x and that as my function u of x because this tells me right here, this inequality tells me that u is bigger than f and l is less than f. So that automatically meets the sort of ordering condition we had to have to make the squeeze theorem apply. That tells me the check now is the limits. So the limit as x goes to zero of x squared, well that's polynomial, so that's just zero. And similarly, the limit as x goes to zero of minus x squared is also zero. There's my u, there's my l, they both go to zero. So then how would you conclude this to write the actual statement? The way you'd wrap this up is something like this. So since negative x squared is less equal x squared cosine of one over x is less equal x squared, and the limit as x goes to zero of negative x squared equals the limit as x goes to zero of x squared equals zero, ordering condition, and then the matching at the endpoint, the squeeze theorem, or sandwich them depending on your book, gives that the limit as x goes to zero of x squared times cosine of one over x equals zero. So in my conclusion, which you should write this entire thing when you're writing out your answer, I have shown what my u and l are for the functions, they satisfy the right order condition, and that their limits both go to zero. Therefore, I have met all the conditions of the squeeze theorem, and so therefore it applies to tell me that this limit must be zero at this point. That's how you should think about writing up problems for squeeze theorem type situations.